Okay, so so far we've talked all about all but one of the reasons causing the Civil War. The territories from the Mexican-American War, are they going to be free territory? Are they going to be slave territory? The Fugitive Slave Act, the Dred Scott decision, John Brown and the Harper's Ferry Raid, and then last but not least, Abraham Lincoln is Abraham Lincoln is elected as President of the United States. Now here I've got a picture of Abraham Lincoln, but I've also included a map of the 1860 election, and this is the election that got him to be President of the United States. The red states, you can see these are the ones that he won those states. The blue states, the green, and the yellow, those are states that he did not win. And you can see all of his victories come from Northern Territory. He wins, he wins absolutely zero states uh, in the South. Um, it's interesting here because the South, I can mention this before, they believe that state rights were more important than the federal power. So if you have a law or if, you have, if there's a conflict, the state wants to do something, but the federal government wants the state to do something else, the, state, the Southerners, Southerners believe that the states ultimately have more authority and, and can make that decision. Now this issue we've been talking about is slavery. The federal government was coming down and saying, hey, you know, we're going to have to get rid of slavery eventually. And the South was, was so concerned about that, they, they, they say no. You know, eventually they're going to they're going to break off and create their whole new country. The election itself is November sixth, eighteen sixty. This is the that was the first Tuesday in November of eighteen sixty. Just like how we run our presidential elections today, every four years on the first Tuesday of November, we go and we vote for president of the United States. Within one month of that election, though, South Carolina decides to leave the country. With two and a half months from that election of November 6, 1860, seven states have left the Union. Now, it's important to remember Lincoln at this time, he isn't even officially the president of the United States yet. Yes, he's won the election, but he hasn't been sworn in. In fact, he doesn't get sworn in until April 12th of 1861. This is five months after he wins the election. That's when he finally gets sworn in. So legally, there was really nothing that Lincoln could do at this time. These states are leaving, but there's very little legally he can do because he's not been sworn in as the president. He was going to be the next president, but there wasn't much he could do. The southern states, they end up uh, forming together and they create a, a new country called the Confederate States of America. And they even elect Jefferson Davis as their new president. And again, poor Lincoln, there's nothing he can do. He's not officially the president. And these states have already taken off. Like I mentioned before, the, the reasons I want to emphasize very quickly, reasons for causing the Civil War, territories from the Mexican-American War, free or slave, Fugitive Slave Act, the Dred Scott decision, John Brown and the Harper's Ferry Raid, and now you know about Abraham Lincoln being elected as president. You know these things now. Now the Civil War is going to, it, it begins. Once the, the southern states break off within a month of that, um, you have the first shots fired in South Carolina, and that's going to be the, the start of the Civil War. This, I mentioned this before, but this is going to be the deadliest and the bloodiest war that the United States has ever fought in. Every single casualty in the North and the South is American. It's going to last for over four years. To give you a scope of this, let's just talk about the Southern states and, and the military in the South. One quarter, 25% of all the Southern men that were alive at the start of the war, they are going to die during the war. One quarter of all the men die during the war. In addition to that, you've got almost another one quarter who end up getting, that are casualties, they end up getting wounded during the war. So you have almost one half of the southern male population are either going to die or going to be injured in, in, the, in the Civil War. It is absolutely devastating, and particularly to the South, is absolutely devastating. Now, the war eventually does end. We'll talk about that. At the end of the war, slavery is officially ended, but the effects of the war are still alive today. Uh, the issue of slavery, yes, it was resolved. It's not legal anymore. But the issues of racism, as well as the issue of state versus federal power, those are, are two issues that are still being battled today. So those are, we'll eventually get to those things. But for now, you understand the five main reasons that the Civil War started.